1,112 of these leaflets were dropped from an airplane just to impress one girl. The leaflets read, Mary Lee, I love you. Will you marry me? Steve. <laughs> now we'd like you to meet Steve. What is your name, please? My name is Steve Musich. My name is Steve Musich. My name is Steve Musich. Only one of these gentlemen is the real Steve Musich. The other two are imposters and will try to fool this panel. Tom Poston, Peggy Cass, Orson Bean, Kitty Carlisle, plus 100 people in our studio audience on To Tell the Truth. This portion of To Tell the Truth is brought to you by a new Simonized non-scuffed floor wax. It dries so bright it still looks wet. And now, here's our host on To Tell the Truth, Bob Collier. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. Good afternoon, panel. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Who's that with uh, you there, Bob? Bright and shiny. Isn't she pretty? Yes, indeed. I dropped Mary Lee her. Gunnison is her name, and she's the subject of our first story, which she will tell in her own words. So, panel, listen carefully. Mary Lee? I, Mary Lee Gunnison, was proposed to in a unique manner. My boyfriend and I were on a picnic when a plane flew over and dropped over a thousand leaflets to the ground. I picked one up and read it. It said, Mary Lee, I love you. Will you marry me? Steve. When I stopped laughing, I gave him my answer. Signed, Mary Lee Gunnison. And we'll start the questioning, if we may, with Orson Bean. Orson? Thank you. Jim uh, number two. Uh, oh, no, that's one. I don't, are you Steve? Yes. Number two? Because I didn't know. Maybe she said no and you're another guy. I, I, uh, what made you dream up an idea like that? Well, I got talked into it. By whom? It was a combination of friends. I'd been flying, and Merrill Lee works with the airlines. I think it's a marvelous idea. Number three, did you consider any other ideas, like uh, skywriting or anything like that? I considered skywriting, but uh, since my financial budget was low, <laughs> they get quite a bit of money to do that. Number one, what did it cost you to pull the whole stunt off? It cost me about uh, $65. Did she say yes on the spot as soon as she stopped laughing, or did she think it over? Uh, she didn't think it over. She said uh, yes in about five minutes. She after. realized you loved her. Well, I think it's sensational. Number two, now, uh, did you get married shortly after that? We're not married. You're not married. <laughs> so Just engaged. Yeah. You're going to have to drop some more leaflets. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Number one, I'm a little confused. Uh, Mary Lee said she was on a picnic with her boyfriend. Was that you? Yes, I'm one. And number two, then you had someone else drop the leaflets out of the plane? Yes. Oh, and so number three, that's how you knew exactly where to, to drop them. I don't understand. Well, I mean, you knew exactly where you'd be, so they dropped the leaflets. Oh, definitely, yes. This is all prearranged with the pilot. I get it. Uh, now, number one, why are you waiting to get married? <laughs> why are we waiting? Well, it takes a certain amount of time to arrange things. Uh-huh. Uh, number two, you don't think she's sort of weakening in her resolve? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Number three, where do you live? Chicago. You both live in Chicago? That's correct. Tom Poston. Chicago, yay. How wide an area did the leaflets cover, number one, when they were, when they were being dropped? Well, they went over, uh, they covered quite a bit of the sky. In fact, uh, most of them landed in the bay. Chicago is city. <laughs> what, what, what bay, number Thank one? You. San Francisco Bay. San Francisco Bay. That is wide from Chicago. Where are you from, number two? Washington, D.C. <laughs> oh, cut it out, number two. Where, where did you do your dropping? In Fairfax, Virginia. How did the uh, pilot know that the leaflets were going to drop on you or on Mary Lee? I thought for a while he didn't. He made five passes. <laughs> we had an orange blanket preset and the location of preset. Well, I think it's terrific, but number three, did Mary know this was going to happen? No, no, she had no idea at all. Oh, that's terrific. Congratulations, whoever. Thank you, Kat. I think it's romantic and it's terrific to tell your children, but number three, did you realize that, or Mary Lee, do you realize that you're marrying a terrific litter bug? <laughs> <laughs> number one, 
Uh, did you get any complaints about all these leaflets that are all over the place? Who picked them up? Did you get a, a stick with the nail at the end of it, or did you just forget it? <laughs> uh, I forgot it. Mary Lee was I was saying yes. You just forgot. I should have picked them up, but too many. I, I just of course, didn't. you couldn't go around swimming in the bay. And number two, who did the artwork on it? I mean, who made it up? This was pretty. It was the printing company in Washington, Rapid you, Printing. Did you design it? No, the printers did. <laughs> you know, you didn't do very much. You didn't fly the plane. You didn't fly the plane. <laughs> all, you did was, all you did was dirty up the town. I said, Mary, we think about this. And number three, what do you do? Do you work for the airlines, too? I'm a mechanical engineer. See, you're very airlines-minded, you two. I and that's it. it. That's all the time we have. Time for you now to pick up your litter and mark your balance, okay. if you will. Mark them at once without change and without any consultation. And while you're doing that, of course, it's time for the studio audience to vote. On the voting machines in front of each of you, there are three buttons. When I say vote, please select number one, number two, or number three. Are you ready? Vote. All right, that's recorded. Panel, for whom did you vote? Tom, what is your vote? I was rude during Peggy's questioning, and I kept interrupting and talking all through. So I'd like to give her this time to give the reason why I voted for number one. Peggy? <laughs> I don't know why you do anything. Peggy, you guess. Uh, but you did talk all the time, and I was interested. I want to know more. Uh, oh, I voted for number two because he is a very pixie quality, and I believe that he'd do it. Orson. I voted for number one. They have the same smile. Uh, Terry Lee and, and he, and I think that even as people's dogs look like them, people's husbands look like them, too. My wife and I look alike, and I think they look Are alike. Are you kidding? She's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> She's kidding, Carlisle. I voted for number two because obviously Mary Lee likes to laugh, and number two has a lot of humor, and I think they're going to get along just fine when they get around to it. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's find out who got the most votes from our studio audience. Our audience voted for... Number two. So, panel is voted, the audience is voted. Mary Lee, if you were voting, for whom would you be voting? Well, I'd vote for number one. <laughs> <laughs> Mary Lee, for whom do you work? Uh, I'm, I'm an airline hostess with uh, TWA. Uh -huh. You plan to continue working for TWA after you get married? Yes, I do. When is the date of the wedding? December 9th. December 9th. Right. Are we all invited? Okay. Fine, fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get a bigger church. Uh -huh. Same, Same date. Exactly. Yes. On the steps of the White House? Uh, afraid not. <laughs> Well, well, it's a joy to have you to here and to here with us and, and to wish you the very best of everything and everywhere. God bless you. <laughs> Number two, what is your real hand? What do you do, sir? I'm Mark Mason, and I'm a general manager for American Children's Theater, producing The Toby Tyler Show. <laughs> and number three, what is your name, and what do you do, sir? My name is John Stern. and I'm president of David Eden Associates. We produce rock and roll records. Well, in checking the score, we find there are one, two, three incorrect votes. Three times $100 is $300. Ladies, rather lady and gentlemen, we thank you very much for gracing our show. Hope it was fun. Goodbye and God bless you. We'll meet our next team of challengers in a minute. But you know, there's usually a reason for not feeling well. Now, coming up next is one of the most unusual and fascinating stories we have ever presented on To Tell the Truth. What is your name, please? My name is John Carroll. My name is John Carroll. My name is John Carroll. We'll learn more about John Carroll in just a minute. Now, this word from Nestle's. Panel, please open up your second envelope now, if you will, and follow along with me. I, John Carroll, used to be a probation officer for the Bronx Children's Court in New York City. Fifteen years ago, I handled a fascinating case. For over a year, I tried to help a fatherless 12-year-old truant by taking him away from his mother and placing him in an institution where he could receive the love and understanding he craved 
and the proper psychiatric help he needed so badly. I encountered a series of problems in trying to place the boy, and before I was able to solve them, his mother took him out of New York State. If I had been given time to help that unfortunate 12-year-old child, the entire course of history might have been changed. The young man's name was Lee Harvey Oswald, signed John Carroll. This portion of the Tell the Truth was brought to you by new Simonized non scuff floor wax. It dries so bright it still looks wet. And at least three gentlemen, as you heard, claim to be John Caro. An audience, you'll be voting again for the real one. Listen carefully to the questioning, if you will, which we will begin with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty. Thank you, Bud. Uh, by the affidavit number one, it seemed that you had real feeling for this child. How did you happen to meet him? It was referred by the court. We came in for truancy. I see. Uh, number two, do you believe that this uh, whole uh, terrible chain of events was caused by his desire to be noticed or to be loved or what? I believe so. To be noticed? I do believe so. Number three, what were the problems you encountered that you couldn't place him before his mother took him away? Well, the usual problems that you find, you know, I'm trying to get him into one of the schools, and uh, you, you, you have to have a series of recommendations to the judges, and all these have to be approved. And if you... Number one, are you still a probation officer? No, I'm not. What do you do now? I'm a lawyer. Tom Poston. Number two, in, in view of... Uh of the uh, consequences of this boy's uh, life. Would you say that you have encountered others with somewhat the same pattern, psychological patterns that he had? Yes, this uh, pattern is not entirely uh, unfamiliar. Number three, have you been able to help some of these boys uh, in a way that would prevent uh, disastrous circumstances from happening in their lives? Not as much as we'd like to, that's about as simple what as What do you do, say. thank you, what do you do for them, number one? I mean, which boys are you speaking about? Well, potential, uh, uh, potentially dangerous boys. You try to get to them early to forestall anything that might happen in the future. How do you do that, number two? Uh, well, and, uh, we counsel them. We refer them for counseling. For example, we might send them, as uh, we did in this case, to Youth House. Uh, uh, we might... Uh, well, in this case also, of course, uh, we referred him to, uh, we attempted to have him institutionalized, but we weren't successful. Thank you. Did Lee Harvey Oswald have any uh, sisters or brothers? Uh, he had a, uh, an older half-brother, and he had an older uh, uh, brother, I believe, by the same father. Well, number two, did they live with him and his mother in New no, York? No, they did not. Uh, number one, was he a naturally bright boy, or was he slow? Well, I think he was an average uh, likable boy, not a bright boy, Arsenal. Okay. Arson Bean. Uh, number two, it seems to me that for practical purposes, psychiatry will never be able to prevent things like this because it's all hindsight to say that he would have been better off in the institution, isn't it? Uh, to a certain extent, yes. I mean, number three, uh, normally one would say that if, if a kid's mother wants him, he must be better off with the mother because you don't get much love and understanding yeah. in an institution, do you? You're absolutely right, and most of the times we do approach it that way. Yeah. But in the long run, when you find out that you're not getting anywhere there. Right. Mm -hmm. Number one, uh, what do you think in the case of a Richard Speck or the guy on the Texas Tower? The these are all comparable types to Oswald, potentially explosive people who seem calm on the outside. Is there any way that a doctor can, or a psychologist can spot this? And if so, what should be done? I think it's very difficult. Actually, uh, there has to be some manifestation of yeah, an early then, childhood. Legally, you can't put somebody away just because you figure something might happen in the future, right? Uh, sorry, that's, that's all we have time for, but uh, it would be a lot more, should be a lot more time for a lot more questioning because it is interesting. However, mark your ballots, if you will, please, panel, at once. And audience, once again, it's time for you to uh, vote with your voting machines. When I say vote, as before, please select number one, number two, our number three. Are you ready? Vote. Okay, those votes are registered. As to the panel, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, I think we've been duly chastened by this uh, 
this spot, the great tragedy that surrounded this boy. But I voted for number two in spite of the fact that he seemed almost too much like a psychologist with his careful answers, weighing his, the pros and cons of everything. But I voted for number two finally. Peggy. Well, it was very hard for me, but I voted for number three. I don't know why. If I were going to be counseled, I'd like to talk to number three. <laughs> Arson me. Well, we got off the track a little in talking about psychologists because actually the gentleman is, was a probation officer, and I voted for number one because he has a bit of the look of the gumshoe about him to me. <laughs> Kitty Carlisle. Mm. I voted for number three. I thought number one was a little too young to have been counseling uh, this boy. I can hardly bear to say his name. Uh, and number two seemed a little bit too professional. So I voted for number three. Okay, well, we'll find out how our audience voted and meet the real John Caro in just a minute. Now, this message. Now, let's see who got the most votes from our studio audience. Our audience voted for... Number two. Very well, let's learn now. Which of these three gentlemen, in truth, was the probation officer for Lee Harvey Oswald? Will the real John Caro please stand up? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for sharing this story with us. Number two, what is your real name and what do you really do? My name is John Rivoire, and I'm a consultant in chemical marketing in New York City. Thank you, sir. And number three, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Joe Pizacane, and I'm the owner of the Caracal Restaurant at Lincoln Center in New York. Thank you. When we check the score, we find you did very well at the fooling job. There were four incorrect votes at $100 each for a total of $400. Gentlemen, thank you for being with us. Goodbye and God bless you. We'll be back in a minute. Now, this word. We have no more time, I'm sorry to say. Thank you very much, panel. Thank you, thank you bud. See Goodbye, you again tomorrow. Bud, thank you. That's the brightest spot in my day, the fact that I'll see you again tomorrow. See you again tomorrow, too, I trust. And in the meantime, don't you forget to tell the truth. The biggest event in blackjack is back, Jack. GSN presents the World Series of Blackjack, an all-new season. I'm so incredibly good at this game. Because they're playing for a king's ransom, we're bringing back the Burger King Power Chip. The World Series of Blackjack, an all-new season tomorrow, 11 p.m., 10 Central, on GSN.